Welcome everybody, King Demps here, bringing you the Ember Mage Class Spotlight for Torchlight 2. Now, the Ember Mage is what you can pretty much call a standard DPS spellcaster, to be honest. Torchlight 2 doesn't really have any support classes, so most of them are involved in DPS or, or tanking in some form or another. Now, the Ember Mage is all about dealing elemental damage as opposed to sort of the more physical kind of damage that is being dealt by the berserker now the inferno skill tree is all about dps and damage over time as we can see with the magma spear inflicts 33 percent of weapon dps as fire damage and 35 percent chance to inflict 18 fire damage over three seconds now you fire a channel barrage bar barrage what am i talking about barrage of magma and um the Ember Mage is all about ranged DPS, whereas the Berserker was uh, up close and personal physical DPS. Now, if we look at the last skill in the skill tree, Firestorm, you call down burning cinders from the sky over a 15 meter radius, setting foes alight and increasing their susceptibility to fire damage. As you can see, 6 to 12 fire damage over 6 seconds, and fire damage taken is increased by 20% for 6 seconds. This class, again, is all about dealing damage over time it's all about sustained damage dealing basically similar with the hunter class with the berserker now charge mastery you expertise with charge your expertise with charge lets you gain it fast and retain it longer again charge is all about dealing damage with the uh, ember mage the charge bar I might as well tell you this now uh, you achieve total concentration for 12 seconds now what this does is it means your spells cost no mana so you can spam away your spells and also, your skill damage is increased by 25%, all about doing damage. Now, Elemental Attunement. 1% seconds... Uh, tell you what it is first. The Ember Mage is finally attuned to the elements, inflicting elemental effects on nearby enemies and extending the duration of all elemental effects. Plus 1 seconds of burn, shock, freeze or poison. And plus 1% chance to burn, freeze, shock or poison for 1 second. Now, again, that's all about dealing damage over time, increasing the duration of your dots. And this is just plus 7 fire damage. When you hit a burning enemy, you do an additional burst of fire damage. More on the damage. Now, the next skill tree is Frost. Now, this is more about freezing and immobilizing enemies, as you might be able to tell by the fact that it's the Frost skill tree. But again, it's slightly different to the DPSing of Inferno. This is more about debuffing the enemy, as you can see with the first skill, Icy Blast. You unleash a hail of five ricocheting Icy Bolts to slow and immobilize your foes, inflicts 30% of weapon DPS as ice damage, and 50% chance to freeze, and 50% chance to immobilize. As you can see there, you're all about debuffing the enemy, so it makes it easier to take them down. The last skill in the skill tree is Astral Ally. You summon an Astral clone of a fellow Ember Mage who joins you in battle with powerful spells. Minions deal 24 to 36 physical damage. As you can see, again, it's more about making it easier to take down enemies. Instead of dealing damage directly, you're getting a mate to help you out. Now, the passive skill, Staff Mastery. Uh, now, this, your skill with stays, lowers the elemental resistances of enemies when you strike them. Again, it's helping you deal damage because this skill tree is slightly weak in dealing damage directly. Uh, frozen Fate, 20% chance to mobilize targets for 3 seconds. Again, it's all about debuffing, making things easy to kill. And Ice Brand, again, extra bursts of ice damage. Another interesting skill that is actually well worth notice, uh, noticing, noting with the Frost skills, is Elemental Boon. Now, this is actually a support spell. It decreases your damage taken by elementals and adds 10% to you, the elemental damage that you are dealing. And not only do you get this, but it's also applied to any allies within 12 meters so that might be a very useful skill if you are deciding you're going to co-op the game with anybody now the storm skills are kind of the third skill tree always seems to be kind of the wild card skill tree as i've noticed a theme within the storm skills is exploding your enemies yes blowing them up and dealing extra damage to the enemies around you this is also about knockback and you can also gain a nice health bonus with a skill in the skill tree as i'll show you 
First off, Prismatic Bolt. Plus 2 to fire, ice, electric and poison damage by unleashing a flurry of 5 prismatic bolts. And plus 10% to poison, burn, shock and freeze. Again, it's all about debuffing and dealing a bit of damage. Now, Shocking Orb inflicts 40% of weapon damage as electrical damage. But what I would like to show you is these kind of skills. Shocking Burst, Explosion on Death. Just ignore everything else. Explosion on Death. Now, does that not sound like a totally badass skill? If we move to... Thunder, no this isn't the one that I was on about, where is it, here it is, Arc Beam, plus 5 knockback, something you don't get with any of the other skills in the Emma Mage, and then Death Bounty, 10 health recovery per second and 2.4 mana recovery per second. As you can see, the Thunder skill set is a little bit of a Thunder, sorry, Storm skills is a, a bit of a mix and match, kind of a mesh of all sorts of different abilities. Prismatic Rift, the first pass passive skill. 50% chance to cast a Rift Warp when you get hit. Your chaotic energy teleports enemies away, which is quite nice. Uh, again, that's it's kind of a, a wild card. You have no idea what you're going to get with these Storm skills. Next passive skill, Wind Chaos. 8% chance to cast a Bizarre Effect on Strike. Attacks using a wand result in Bizarre Random Elemental Disturbances. This... Uh, look at it. It's almost as if it's proving my point. A bizarre effect. That is what this skill tree is all about. Random crap. And then there's your plus seven electrical damage, which you get with all of the skill trees with the Emma Mage. Well, now that we've had a look at those skill trees, we're going to go and we're just going to get stuck into some enemies just to show you what combat is all about with the Emma Mage. Now, pow, as you can see, ooh, getting in up close and personal with the stave, but also doing lots of range damage with our skills. Now, it's important to note that even with the mage, there is a relatively high emphasis compared to possibly other games on um, ooh, on getting up close and personal with combat as well. You do do a fairly decent amount of damage with your uh, uh, stave and your physical combat. Now, as you can see with the magma spear particularly, it goes through many enemies when you fire. So uh, the game is trying to make it fairly reasonable for you to be able to use it in large groups of enemies. It doesn't just deal damage to one. And uh, that is what the Ember Mage, pretty much all of his skills are about. They all do area of effect damage. They deal more damage to more than one target at any one time. Now, we're just going to keep getting stuck in with our... Uh, whoop, with our skills here, lots of it. And um, I think that pretty much concludes our... Uh, well, we'll just select... We'll select the uh, electrical fire wand or whatever, why not? And I'm pretty sure that concludes our uh, our spotlight on the Ember Mage. So uh, if you enjoyed this, guys, please check out the other spotlights that I am doing. I hope you also found it informative. Don't forget to like, favour and subscribe to my channel. I have been King Demps and I will see you next time.